we'll make our way down nice. Okay. We're ready for it. Exciting, no? Kevin and Janetta are taking a guided snorkeling tour. Nothing to worry about. I have this life ring with me. And once you go Jack, you never go back, huh? We had Jack, the Dutch Italian. You quite liked Jack, didn't I thought you? Jack was really nice. And just like Cinderella. And I'm sure that's the first time you've ever used that line. <laughs> Only for the best, huh? Thank you. He turned me into a Finderella. <laughs> If you look right below, you see a big black fist. Now, that's actually a giant trevally, guys. Going out with Jack into the ocean, we got a lot more out of that experience than any other snorkeling I've ever done. Absolutely. Much better. So if there's any fish that you can avoid touching, it's definitely here, yeah, oh, the oh, surgeon. Which one fish. was that? The surgeon. The yellow fin surgeon fish. Let's have a look, guys. We were out around a flotation device, a, a ring. Yeah, you couldn't get your hands off Jack's ring. To delve more deeply into what the reef has to offer, you can try an introductory scuba dive. I don't even like it that deep when I'm in a pool. Oh, oh my god. We've never been scuba diving before and we've always had in the back of our mind we never would because we can't swim. The same here, we're gonna so on the chair. <laughs> We can doggy paddle in a pool and that's fine, but when it comes to the ocean, we get really nervous. All right, just lean your face down into the water there, girls. Have a little bit of a look around and a little break. That's the way. I couldn't get used to breathing underwater. <laughs> so unnatural. Yeah, you're doing very well. Feels a little bit, it feels a bit strange. Yeah. Shit was getting real. Yeah. We were actually going scuba diving. Taking your face down gently into the water. Yeah. We had to swim underneath the boat and get out. Past the steps, it was just blue. You couldn't see anything. When we got up to the reef, we'd never seen anything like it. Yeah. I what it's like. There was fish going past everywhere, and I was putting my hand out, and I was trying to touch all these fish. I was scared, and I was shitting myself, but I was enjoying it. Because the goggles were on, it felt like you were behind a glass and all these fish just kept coming up and swimming towards you. But not only that, you could feel the water and you could feel the fish swimming past. It was something special. Even though we didn't really want to do it at all, I would definitely go scuba diving again, I think. How good was that? That was so cool. <laughs> the most incredible sight in the world. We're metres underwater, being able to breathe and seeing all this beautiful fish and coral and it's right in your face. It was nuts. The first few seconds are pure terror and then it's pure calm. The coral was brighter and more abundant than I expected. The fish species, you just couldn't count them and the amount of huge fish that are just friendly enough to come up. We can now understand why they call it the Great Barrier Reef. Should be calling it the Fabulous Barrier Reef. As the sun sets on the open ocean, our guides are discovering their sleeping arrangements. With overnight conditions of 23 degrees and a light breeze, why go inside? So these are your reef beds that you'll be staying on tonight? What are they? Beds for you to sleep on out on the reef. Oh, oh wow. Sleeping pods out in the open, looking at the stars. What a great way for us to see the reef. I love it. What happens if there's a shark attack, though? We watch it. <laughs> Haven't you ever seen that movie where the sharks come up through the ground? Sharknado? I don't think so. So I don't know what kind of movies you've been watching, but that's not real life stuff. It was a true story. <laughs> we are actually going to sleep on the sea in a swag. Who ever thought you could do that? We've slept in trucks, we've slept on the ground, we've slept in the desert, and now we're sleeping on the ocean in a swag. That's pretty cool. Reef beds aren't the only option for a bunk. Your accommodation is just down here. Oh, really? 
We've been on those pontoons before and they're pretty low rent. We're going quite some distance down. Yeah. We're not all that excited. We've done this sort of thing before. And we've never heard of accommodation on the reef. What are you expecting? Well, hopefully a bed. Hopefully a bed. I see a bed. Uh. Yes. <laughs> Look at this. It looks like no. four giant TV screens. No. But it's not. Reef World is home to one of the few underwater hotels in the world. And it's the only place on the Barrier Reef where you can sleep with the fishes. And we were sort of lost for words. I mean, yeah, this is... a little bit gobsmacked. Oh. Look. Below yeah. and in front of us. How incredible. This is a world iconic natural wonder. And we were as close as you can get to being a fish. This is the first time I think we've ever gone into a hotel room and haven't been more concerned about the bed than anything else. Exactly, haven't even looked at the bathroom, don't even think we will.